Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today, I'm gonna go over TradingView and how to use it for beginners. Again, guys, I'm kind of a beginner myself, so I'm not gonna say that I'm some expert in this, but somebody asked, you know, just to set you up, how do you, how do you add things? How do you do trend lines? How do you do basic things? And then kind of what, what do I look for when I'm doing my charting? So I've got this pulled up. This one's already got lines on it. I'll, I'll show you how to add some things in here. So let's say you want to add a company. And I don't, let's say you've got a company over here. You've, you've got these, well, first I'll start with, you've got these sections. So this is a section here. I put gold and silver. That's what this is on the right here. Uh, if you want to add a section in there, you just right click, add section. And then it comes up with section two. You can double click on it and then type in whatever you want. You know. Uh, uh, royalty companies hit enter and then it's royalty companies in it and it splits them up if you want to add a company you right click in this section you hit add symbol that's a ticker symbol and then what you're going to add is i'm going to add a a ticker symbol i'm just going to use sil because i haven't done anything with that it comes up as global x silver miners double click it or hit enter, and I'm hitting enter, it threw it over here, and there is S-I-L. So you've got your thing, you've got your buttons on the lower left here. So we're looking at S-I-L, which you can see in the upper left. What this is indicating here is that it's looking at it from a daily candlestick perspective at this viewpoint. So you can scroll in and out by using your mouse to scroll outward, or inward. I'm using the mouse roller and you can scroll like this to get a larger picture on a daily candlestick view. You can scroll inward. Now if you hit this in the lower left like all, you notice that it changes to M. M is a monthly candlestick basis. That means each candlestick is a month in duration. And you can scroll in and out based off of the mouse. If you want to scroll uh, on the price where you put your your uh, mouse over the price, you can scroll over that and shrink it and expand it. You can do the same thing uh, with anywhere on the the thing for the time frame. So time frame here and directly over this for the price. If you want it to go back to where it originally was, go to the lower right hand where it says auto and hit auto and it will scale it back to where it was. Now you've got a percent, so you can hit total percentage. This is on a percentage basis. You can hit logarithmic and this is on a logarithmic basis. On a logarithmic basis, what this does is it's even going up uh, the multiples going up. So it's a 10x, 10x, and it's the same distance as it goes up for logarithmic. And this is just a regular um, scale. Log will shrink it down because to go 10x from a high number, it's going to be very shrunk. It's going to shrink as you go up. It's going to compress as you go up and elongate towards the bottom. I like viewing a lot of my charts in the logarithmic, um, doing the log here on a long time frame. And that's kind of where I, I like viewing them. Now, if you want to draw a trend line or something in here, what you do is you go to the upper left. This is your like cross here. You can get a cross, a dot, an arrow. We'll try an arrow here. And that, that's a big arrow. And hopefully you guys can see that on your thing. Uh, for some reason, let me see if I can actually change. Let me see if there's like a configure this here. One second. Because when I'm looking at that, it's way smaller on my OBS screen, and it's absolutely massive on my screen, the actual arrow that I'm moving around here. Here's your color theme. Uh, I put it on dark. And let's see if we can have settings. Maybe there's like something for the mouse. Uh, symbols, I'm under settings here. Status, 
scales. And I don't think there's anything I can use for the mouse. I've got a huge mouse and it looks really small on the OBS screen for some reason. So I cancel out. So if you want to draw a trend line, what you do is you got some on your icons over here on the left hand side. You can choose and say, I'm going to choose this. You can go to the right. You can get trend line and arrow array, info line, extended line. I haven't used some of these either. Horizontal line, vertical lines, parallel channel. Let's try a parallel channel. I, I don't think I've ever done one of these. So if you do this, I bet you you do this, and then you draw down, and there's your channel. See? If you want a, a channel like that. You know, you could do like a channel here or so. So that's a channel. Uh, we can do a trend line. So what you want to do is you want to select trend line in your upper left here. Select trend line. You just click it and drag across, and then re and then click it again. That's a trend line. We can see what else is in here. We've got, oops, let's go here. Horizontal lines, vertical lines. We kind of know what that is. Regression trend. We'll see what that is. I, I don't think I've ever done one of those. There's a regression trend apparently. Works pretty well there. Delete that out. Now you can also use, I don't know what this stuff is in here. Fib, oh, fib retracement, I've used that. Trend-based fib retracement, pitchfork, fib channel, fib time zone, GAN box, GAN squared fixed, uh, GAN fan. You can put all this stuff in here. And honestly, guys, I don't really use too much of this in, in here. You could probably search these and, and figure out what most of these are used for, but I don't perform GAN analysis or anything. And maybe I'll get someone on here who does. But I don't I don't use a lot of this in here. Uh, and what I do is I just identify kind of the big patterns. You can use a brush, a highlighter, rectangle. You can put all this stuff in here as well based off of these icon. If you use a brush, you can kind of just, you know, draw it in there. You know, get get your you know, like a like a shoulder head shoulder or something like that. If you want to throw that in there, um, going on, you could put text text in here. We have a text box, anchor text, a note, uh, a tweet. Let's do some tweeting, right? A balloon. You can put all these different things in here in this text area. If we were to do text, you can put a text thing saying, uh, I am cool. So this pullback is I am cool uh, right there. And I'm sure you can obviously make it larger. You can double click on it uh, and make your, you know, make it a lot larger. So people can see it. it says I am cool. Uh, you can also put smiley faces and other different little icons on here. Um, I don't know if there's a rocket ship or something. Yeah, maybe we can put a rocket ship there. Double click on it. You can change the style and the color, make it an orange one. A little easier to see. And then I bet you you could probably rotate it like this. You could probably make it larger and smaller by grabbing it. So there's your rocket ship. Maybe get a little bit of stuff out the back. <laughs> you can measure things. I don't really use the measurement device that much. If you want to measure things like that, you can. You can do a zoom in. Magnet mode snaps drawing place near price bars to the closest. I've never used that before. Stay in drawing mode, lock all drawings, hide all drawings, and then remove drawings. And I don't really do too much with that. You can also change your candlesticks. Uh, it's right next to the M with, this is a monthly candlestick chart. Obviously you can change it to the dailies. This is a daily and you can just zoom way out to get the same type of look. Uh, if you wanna change your candlesticks, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back in so you guys can see the candlesticks. Hit this guy. You can change it to bars. So now it's bars, candles, hollow candles, if you like it hollowed out. You can do a line uh, area underneath. Maybe a little bit easier to see for some people. You can do baselines where you take a line and anything under it's red, anything above it is green. Or maybe that's about the 50% point. Uh, I don't even know what that is. 
Oh, I guess just downward motion, motion versus upward. Renko, and I don't use these very much. We're going to do line break. Hmm. Here is the um, Kagi. Get some Kagi going. Point and figure charts. You can see I am cool there. And then, you know, we got range here. I'm going to go back to my, my favorite, which is candles. And then we got, uh, you can always compare something. So if you want to compare something like the 10-year yield, I can throw that on there. Uh, so what I can do here, I just do TNX, enter. Uh, and what that is, it's comparing, in the candles is the SIL, S-I-L, and this is your 10-year yield. And you can see that there's a high correlation here. Not super high, but there is a, there is a correlation here, somewhat. It's a loose, loose correlation. I'm gonna zoom out. And there's your 10 year yield. And if you want to remove it, you go back over to TNX in the upper left here. You can just hit the X button if you want to remove it, or you can hit settings if you want to uh, do something like change the color on it so we can make it blue or yellow or you know whatever you want. There's yellow. Or then you can hit X to get rid of it, to remove it. So you exit out, and there it is. It is gone. Uh, I haven't really used too much of these indicators. I haven't really done too much with that. Uh, the financials haven't done too much. The templates haven't done too much with any of these right here. If you want to save something in TradingView, so let's say you've got an awesome pattern or an awesome uh, you know, moonshot that's about to happen here with Sil J in this. It, it's not really an inverted head and shoulders. I'm just drew that in there and was joking. But you can save some of the stuff on the right hand side. This is your settings, chart settings here that if you want to do something with it, which I don't really play too much with, uh, you can do a full screen mode if you want to do that. And then if you want to save it, you can take a snapshot here. You click on it, you can hit save chart image, copy chart image, open image in a new tab, tweet chart image, uh, and so forth. If you hit tweet chart image, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, okay, it does something like that. All right, just testing it. I usually save the chart image or copy it and paste it onto something else to share with everyone on the channel. So there's that, you've got your watch list, and this is what you create by right-clicking and adding a symbol or a section. Uh, that is something that you can do. You can also change the colors of it. Like if you want it to be blue, you can highlight it blue. If you want a bunch of blues for some reason, like they're gonna be buys or whatever it is, uh, or you can just leave it unflag. So you can put flags on it if you like and put different colors. Uh, obviously, I broke mine up into groups like gold and silver, royalty, oil and natural gas, uranium. I've got solar and renewables, mine, the mining companies like diversified miners, the ratios, charts. Now, if you're going to do a ratio chart, the way that you set this up is you can click over here. And let's say you want to do uh, SILJ. You want to do the, the backslash there. See that backslash that I just entered in there? You put that backslash in there. And you could put like GDX. So this is the SIL to GDX ratio and just hit enter. And this is the ratio of SIL to GDX is what you'll see in the upper left. So this is a ratio chart uh, of SILJ. So, so silver outperformed in 2010 all the way till you know 2014, uh, 2016, uh, SIL did. And then GDX outperformed here um, all the way to 2020. And this is another ratio that you could buy buy when it's cheap and sell when it's expensive. It's kind of in the middle right now. Uh, you, <clears throat> you'd want to be holding SIL at the, from the bottom here. We'll probably get some volatility, but that's how you do a ratio. Uh, if you're looking for like a futures contract, what I do is like type in copper 
and you'll get like copper futures and whatnot. The ones I look at is the ones that say futures COMEX on the right here. I click the little arrow down and then it says copper futures continuous contract in front. You could do HG1 and that's one that you could that you could follow. And that's one I've been following and charting uh, for our daily analysis here. Good job, copper. Way to move higher. And then I've got a section where I've got, you know, uh, LBS1 exclamation mark, which is the random length lumbers future contract. You know, you can find nickel, you can find palladium, you can find uh, coca futures and a whole bunch of other ones. This is wheat futures. Go wheat. It's killing it. But uh, you can you can have all these patterns here that you can save. So you, you can go in there and you can add all of your stuff in your watch list and then do your charts. And the cool thing about TradingView is it automatically save your charts. And I know we've got some stuff down here. I don't really use this down here. I've never had to use it. Um, open, I don't know what these necessarily are. Uh, it looks like we can do text notes underneath it. That's pretty, pretty awesome. If you want to write something down here, but we don't need to do that. And that's, that's really, I think we'll get you, get you started. Um, adding a symbol, you can also add it in your upper right here. Uh, and if you need to do any settings, you can do some stuff over here in your settings, add a section, clear list, export list, import, rename it, make a copy. Um, there's also stuff on the right hand, like alerts, news, data window and i don't i'll be honest i don't really use any of these on the right you can do public charts and private charts i guess what i do is i create a watch list i go to and use my watch list and i use these guys over here to add comments i use the text button a lot i don't really use the text notes most of the time i know what's going on with the chart but if you're going to make charts for people you may want to annotate things um maybe i should be doing that more for you guys anyway and Sometimes I annotate things for presentations or interviews or something I might do on Twitter. So that's the, the basic overview of TradingView. And I think it's a solid program software. And I like how it saves everything. That's huge. It's a huge time saver to have your entire watch list over there. You click it and it pulls up something that you've already done. Huge win there. So I think that TradingView, because of that, uh, is where I typically will end up. If you guys like this analysis, give me a thumbs up. Hopefully it helps you out in your trading view uh, software journey. Uh, and thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.